creating an urban mass transit system from scratch, you wouldn't design it to work like this. Hi, I'm John D, and this is Tipping Point. The average commute to and from work is 40 kilometers. Do that in your average car, and you'll emit 13 kilograms of greenhouse gas. If you take the train, you'll only emit 5 kilograms. And going by bus, well, that's only 3.7. Of course, we all know it's easier just to get in the car and drive. You're secure, you're not reliant on anyone else, but maybe it's time we had another look at public transport. I mean, for a start, it is cheaper. In fact, if you live in Perth, bus travel in the CBD is completely free. Now, the authorities in Perth have made a good thing even better by completing a trial of hydrogen-powered buses that emit no CO2 at all. The only thing coming out of their tailpipe was water. OK, public transport doesn't suit every trip, so when we do have to move in an unplanned way, how can we do it most efficiently? Well, 60% of car trips in Australia are 10 kilometres or less, so why don't you try one of these? Cycling to work every day isn't just good for your health and the environment, it can save you up to $160 a week. In fact, in 2006, Australians bought 1.3 million bicycles and selling cars for the fifth year in a row. So we are getting that message. But why can't we get even more people riding by introducing a bicycle hire scheme similar to those found in Europe? For instance, the Velib project has introduced 20,000 push bikes into Paris. The bikes are electronically tagged to prevent theft and they're free for the first half hour. All right, reality check. We'll always need cars for one reason or another, but we don't need them as much as we think. And the ones we do buy can be more fuel efficient. These two cars both seat seven adults, but according to the government's Green Vehicle Guide website, one uses over 17 litres per 100 kilometres, while the other uses only eight. For the average driver, that's a saving of around $2,000 a year and over five tonnes of CO2. So, before buying, use the website to find the best model. Another way to go is to buy a hybrid car or to not own a car at all. Just rent one when you need it or join a car share scheme. You should find that it works out cheaper in the end as well as better for the planet. I'm John D for the Weather Channel. See you soon. Hi, John D again. To find out more about this episode of Tipping Point, log on to weatherchannel.com.au.